Welcome to another commentary on Bay Diggity. This is going to be in the loser's bracket. Unfortunately, as far as what happened to the rest of the winner's bracket, I do not have replays. So Nesh got knocked down here. Keen got knocked down here. Nesh starting in the upper right-hand corner as the Peach Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Keen starting as the White Zerg. This is on Polypoid once again. Between these two, oh man, I got a favor, Nesh. Keen, Keen's been playing strong. And this is no knock on Keen. But Nesh has very, very strong... I think TVZ is his strongest matchup. And I've seen him push around players of the caliber of Machine when he's in good shape. So, in fact, I think I have replays around on this channel of that. Those are fun matches. But Nesh, great player. Overlord making its way to the upright in corner. Well, never mind. So initially making its way out to the right. Looks like it wants to just take an odd angle to the left-hand corner. For that scouting pattern, maybe to avoid sneaky SCVs doing their thing. Supply Depot to the north on that edge. Nesh, though, yeah, he just plays old school Sparks Terran where he's going standard, oftentimes going to Rax Academy, threatening the front potentially with a stim pack run across the map, stuff like that. And from there, he just is really good at going into the mass medic marine, moving those huge ball all over the place, just obliterating lurkers out on the mini-map. And his science vessel play, I think, is particularly outstanding. I think he does a very good job protecting his science vessels in this match. Keen, on the other hand, has been looking strong. He's been looking strong lately, and his Mutalist play has been looking strong in particular. So I think what we might end up seeing is Keen potentially going for two hatch, maybe three base, two hatch, maybe three hatch Mutalist, and going Maybe trying to play that aggressive all in style, and then it'll come down to micromanagement of Marines versus Mutalists. So there, yeah, we saw it would have paid off, because checking that inside corner there for Nesh to see if that Overlord was there, now making his way bottom right. So that Overlord going a different path actually might have paid off. But instead, unfortunately paying off nothing for either player, well, I think it's working out for Nesh. But it could have been disaster for him, so scouting the, the hatchery the 12 hatch, and for whatever reason, I got rid of his vision there in the midst of that. Quick extractor, spawning pool as well, which again leads me to believe and gonna steal some minerals. I love it when SCVs do that, or attack behind those lines. It looks like we do have, it's just gonna be, a, upon seeing that hatchery, it's gonna be a quick expansion from Nesh. Now the question is, is are we going to see two racks Academy, or are we going to see maybe Engineering Bay first? If he goes Engineering Bay first, I think he's going to be in a strong position. Because, yeah, Nesh going straight to Lair. I think he wants those early Mutalisks. Upon seeing this, particularly having this level of information right off the bat, I wonder actually if having an advantage having those minerals in hand lets you use the mineral return instead of having to worry about having vision on minerals as well. That's just a side thought I had as far as like an advantage of being able to steal minerals. Because first of all, you're denying a little bit of minerals. Second of all, when you do the return, they just go straight through units. You don't have to worry about pathing problems as much. But anyway, so you can always go to that option if you're a little bit concerned and get it to jut through buildings and things like that. Anyway, we are seeing that second barracks being dropped. No geyser as of yet. A supply depot on the front just to create a little bit of a blockade. Finally, no geyser. A refinery. So it looks like it is going to be two racks. I assume this is going to be two racks academy to start. And then we will see how Nesh does on turret placement and defense from there. SCV still ooh, taking a lot of damage from that Zergling in between. I'm actually a little bit... I'm not shocked he built the Supply Depot here, but I'm wondering if he would have... Upon seeing the, the fewer Zerglings, he might have tried to sneak something else out there. It looks like he's just... One thing is he doesn't have to build that bunker, so that's kind of an advantage. Never mind, he's building a bunker now upon losing that... SCV maybe spotting that. Otherwise, N Keen dropping that spire at the natural. No additional SCVs making their way out for the scouting information. There's that academy working its way. But yeah, I think it's going to be Mutalisk Micro, and I wouldn't be shocked if Keen goes for a heavy dive. Zerglings and Mutalisk, even at the natural. Out of the two barracks, that'll be a lot of Marines to work with. So he should be okay. Third base setting up bottom left. Ooh, on the natural though. Which means he really has to make sure these mutalisks stay alive and do their work. 
because if he drops or loses a chunk of health and Nesh can just start walking out on the map, there's no ramp to help defend this. It could also be that Keen's thinking, you know what, I'm just going to try to risk it and skip. Uh, Lurker, I know a lot of players try to do that these days, try to go uh, skip Lurker style if they can pull it off. Initial two medics out. Stimpak, not that far from finishing. Mutalisks are already on the way. Looks like it is going to be at least six, potentially more, plus one weapons being upgraded behind it. And yeah, Nesh not missing a beat. Now that he's got those two medics pressing out a little bit, testing those Zerglings, getting a little bit of damage done, but holding up short otherwise. Third barracks being built, plus one weapons, and range. So it'll be a bit of time before Nesh feels very, very comfortable dealing with these Mutalisks. The hatchery not that far from completing bottom left. Nesh dropping some comsat, checking that natural expansion to see if there are any something colonies. And I'm wondering if he's debating going for some pressure stim. One missile turret there at the natural expansion, one at the main currently as well. Current and uh, also a additional missile turret over the barracks. <clears throat> but now from here, yeah, this is where the game is going to be won or lost. This is really health preservation for Keen and his Mutalus Micro, and how how well he boxes Nesh back. Nesh dropping two turrets along that lower edge. He has that third one up, and Nesh, yeah, starting to peek forward. Range not that far from finishing. That will help a lot against those Mutalus, but the Mutalus are already taking some decent chunks of damage already, and it doesn't look like they've gotten a kill. One Marine down. Medic's still surviving. And they've got plenty of energy. Nesh being patient with it. Ooh, one Marine explodes on that edge. It gets picked off, but a Mutalisk goes down as well. So two Marines for a Mutalisk is not the trade that Keen's looking for. Three barracks still whirling in the background. It's still sticking at three, and I wonder if we're going to see... You know what's funny? I'm wondering if we're going to see that Valkyrie build. Which, if it happens here, I'm going to be like, wow, I was way out of the meta. Because I saw it once in one of the Korean replays, and all of a sudden, it has just become the standard thing. No, fourth barracks being dropped. There is the factory being built behind this, but we'll see. Uh, I, I believe this is still going to be standard. Actually, a fifth factory being dropped, so it looks like this is going to be plus one weapons, five medic, uh, five racks, and a really heavy attack into the natural expansion, potentially, with overwhelming amounts of troops in the mid-game. Keeps the science vessel count shorter, which means Keen might get some bonus. Ooh. And as I was like, oh, medic, marine, so good with Nesh. One of them getting pulled off. There's a full control group there. Plus one weapon, still a ways off. Some Marines getting stranded. Oh, Nesh doesn't look like he's in his best form here. But running forward, able to get an Overlord kill. Swinging back. Oh, getting good chunk of damage right there. One Mutalist that was on recovery looks like almost getting taken out. One Mutalist down, two Mutalists down from that ball. These going, to, oh, taking a lot of damage as they're swinging overhead. And honestly, even if this attack force gets wiped out, Nesh doing a lot of damage here. Because there are only three Mutalists, four Mutalists remaining. So yes, the Medic Marine grouping's gone, but keep in mind there's five racks behind this pumping units. Which means they can replenish very rapidly, and SCV and four Marines making their way bottom left to go ahead and create havoc down here. Yeah, the Mutalists can't harass Nesh's front, and they're, because of the lack of Hydralis then here, it might pose a problem in the mid game where Nesh is more or less just going to have so many medic marines that Keen isn't going to really be able to oppose him. So driving into the drone line, going to be able to wipe out drones there, critically potentially shut down gas production. So larva cost, the Mulus moving bottom left, Nesh not missing a beat and moving marines towards the natural expansion that still does not have Sutton Colony coverage. I think Keen realizing the problem, making his way back around, just gonna sack that hatchery, has already emptied out drones from the natural upon realizing the initial air. The medics not quite grouped up, but now engaging. Looks like they are gonna be able to clean up the medic marines. Once again, Nesh still with a decent supply lead though. And even though, again, he lost that grouping of medic marines, he's still got more coming. And he's got the double starport up. Do not see the science facility as of yet. Second engineering bay being dropped. There's a science facility being constructed. And having shut down this hatchery and locked Keen to two bases, this puts Keen in very much an all-in situation where he needs to go all-in Mutalisk and win it straight that way or nothing. Plus one weapons is now online. Keep in mind, plus one weapons for the Mutalisks. Also online, however. 
But as soon as Irradiate is on the field, Team Shaba is going to get all the harder, trying to replant that hatchery bottom left. More Mutalis is getting wiped out. And Keen just going to GG right there, realizing that he just does not have sufficient attack forces, that Nesh was still going to press ahead, and that Irradiate was just around the corner, and he wasn't going to be able to hold any of his bases. Going to move on to a game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Regardless, thanks for listening.